hello everyone welcome back to my channel my name is kimberly if this is your first time here this is only my second video so there's not a lot you need to learn about me but i just want to apologize before i start about my last video that literally sounded like an asmr video but today we're gonna speak loud and proud okay so in my last video i talked about four reasons why it is okay to be an undecided undeclared major and today i kind of want to expand on my story and also talk about six tips i have for students who are undeclared that can really help them excel in their program and eventually switch into the major that they're hoping to switch into so let's get started <music> Actually, before we get started, I just want to say I noticed a lot in my last video that I said so a lot and I'm going to put a so counter in this video because I, as someone that loves public speaking, am always, always trying to improve and it's really not good to use so because it's just another filler word like uh, um, but like, you know, stuff like that. So, therefore... <laughs> I will be putting a so counter in this video just so I can hold myself accountable and try to really minimize the word so. For those who don't know, I went to undergrad in at UC Irvine and I studied chemical engineering and I've already graduated this past June and however when I got into UC Irvine I got in as an undeclared major every freshman is required or first year is required to sign up for an orientation and me being the procrastinating person I am I signed up for orientation kind of late so I got one of the last slots and this really meant that my options for classes were slim because those first years who signed up for earlier slots had you know more options to choose from so i came in with the intention of wanting to study civil engineering and i tried to enroll in courses that put me on this four-year track and luckily my university for the school of engineering i'm not really sure about other majors they have these flow charts that show the common courses engineering students will take throughout all four years and for each quarter so i kind of followed that and i tried to enroll in courses that would put me on the right track so for example for the first quarter of civil engineering they require you they suggest that first year should take the or calculus one and the first general chemistry course so i was able to sign up for those classes and during this quarter i also took a, an undecided undeclared course that is given by my university and it was just a one unit class that met like once a week and they talked about different majors that the university has they brought in students different career paths that students with this degree can take and so i really learned a lot about different majors from that course after my first two quarters, although I wanted to study civil engineering coming in, I noticed that I really liked general chemistry, even though I didn't like chemistry that much in high school. And I thought if I like it a lot in college and since I want to study more, I should do something that allows me to study more chemistry. And for civil engineering majors, you only have to stop at the first two classes. So this is one I already changed my mind literally after the first two quarters in college and I decided I wanted to double major in environmental engineering and civil engineering because environmental has to take more chemistry courses. So I switched my focus um, to do that and at the end of my first year as an undeclared major, I really confirmed my desire to go into engineering after taking all of these high level math courses, this uh, general chemistry, these general chemistry courses physics and everything, I realized that this is something that I really want to study. I know I want to combine all the sciences and, you know, do something like engineering that's very hands-on. So as an undeclared student at my university, we had the opportunity to apply as an undeclared student for the school that we were trying to get into that has the major we desire. So UC Irvine has I don't know how many schools, but they have different schools that hold different majors. So I wanted to get into the Hen Henry Samueli School of Engineering, and I was able to apply to that school as an undecided student. And 
I don't know how it works for other universities, but for mine, we had to have a specific amount of classes completed. And luckily I had a, more than enough classes completed to go into the School of Engineering. So I was accepted as an undecided student. And this gave me priority over some engineering classes that unde undeclared students wouldn't have. So if your university has something like this, I highly recommend you look into that to see if you could possibly apply Eventually, I emailed multiple advisors in the School of Engineering to see if I could meet with them over the summer after my first year, and I was able to get a meeting with one of the advisors, and because I had worked so hard my first year, I still had two classes that I needed to complete in order to switch into one of the engineering majors I was thinking of, but the counselor was so impressed by my performance, and after I was really polite to them, they decided to switch me into the major early before I even started any of or before I even had finished those two courses I still needed to complete so that was an awesome awesome thing I'm going to go over a few tips that I have for students that I did throughout my undergrad um, that hopefully you can take first I want to say try to enroll for an early orientation date or an early enrollment date um, so my second tip is meet with an undeclared advisor as soon as you can. In your first few weeks of school, try to set up a meeting with an undeclared advisor. I am pretty sure their email will be flooded with other students trying to get into their office, but try to be persistent. Really try to call the office and see if you can schedule a meeting because that will help you a lot in the long run. If you're really trying to get ahead of the game, see if you can meet with them um, with an undeclared advisor before the school year even starts or see if you can try to get a private meeting with one at your or your freshman orientation and a lot of times schools like I mentioned earlier will have like a common track that students take so try to see if that advisor can go over one with you to see what courses you can take right now my third tip is see if you can meet with an advisor for the major you're pl you're planning to switch into but try to see if you can somehow meet with an engineering advisor or you know um, a sociology advisor or psychology or biology you know someone that in a, in a major that you're pretty sure you want to switch into this one see if you can meet with the school because it doesn't hurt to ask honestly you don't lose anything my fourth tip is talk to people that used to be undeclared to see what steps they took. And I actually did this in my um, first year because I was also considering computer science. So there was a program for un undeclared women uh, who wanted to go into technology and they paired you up with someone who used to be undeclared who was now um, informatics or computer science or computer science and engineering so I got a mentor and I was able to talk to her talk to her about her courses what kind of internship she's done and I realized through that that I didn't really want to do computer science so the fifth tip I have is do not do not talk to other first years that are undeclared because I mean, obviously talk to them, like have a conversation with them, but don't seek advice from them because they're going through the same thing or a similar thing that you are. So oftentimes the advice they give, they haven't really been able to implement that. Do you know what I mean? They haven't been ahead of you and gone through it. They're with you and going through it. So it's much better to talk to someone who has experience with this. Um, so number six, counselors can be really helpful getting you into courses or uh, or like classes that are restricted. And it really goes a long way being polite, making sure you respect their time and really trying to show them that this is something you care about. Kind of like what I did with my counselor. I had emailed him multiple times, you know, asking for help, telling him what my situation is and showing him, you know, my GPA, my coursework and everything. And eventually he was able to see that I am a very hardworking student and he, he basically was able to develop trust in me because he knew that I would be able to complete the required courses in order to become a chemical engineering major. So I really recommend trying to 
not butter up your counselors, but really be nice to them because sometimes if a course is restricted, you really need that course, they can be the ones to help you. Those are all of my tips and that is my story. I hope I didn't go too fast. I think when I'm talking louder, it makes me speed up more. So I don't know. We'll see how that goes. I'll try to compare myself to my other video to see if I can work on anything else. Thank you so much for stopping by. I will see you in the next video. Bye.